Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Motion Lewis. And I met Maya and my whole life changed. I started producing female artists and because of Maya, I literally met every female from 1998 to 2000, let's say 10. And from Maya, it was, gosh, we did Moulin Rouge and that led me to Pink. And then I met Beyonce and Destiny's Child and did the Survivor Project. I started feeling the weight on my chest. Of course, they, they say you're having a massive heart attack. I'm waiting to die, so is everybody else. At that point was my kind of epiphany. I was like, life has to change. I gotta get healthier. You heard it from him himself. Take care of yourself. You can pump that stuff in there and kind of get by a physical, but you can't really lie to the man up above and play with your time. Take your life very seriously when it comes to trying to you know, pump iron and do it naturally. Michelle Obama did this campaign like a while ago where she was doing a lot of health. And it's just like, as people that see how music can be an influence, not just mental health, but also like physical health. What's a message that a lot of young people sort of trying to come up in the business and things like that? Be okay with no's. Don't necessarily look at something as a negative. Instead of a, a loss, look at it as a lesson. What I'm doing is, uh, I'm doing basically what Luther Vandross was doing. I'm covering uh, other people's material because number one, the material from our generation was outstanding. Someone hit me from the back of the car and uh, it crushed the back of the car in so bad that they crushed the whole, they pushed the back seat up into the front seat. Right, wow. From that, I, I inquired a lot of back pain, sciatica, you know, right. that kind of thing. This is a, what they call the Musashi blade. The weight of the sword actually um, allows you to strengthen up all of this up in here. And then when you're using your chi and standing in a, in a specific stance, so it's really engaging a lot of yeah. the abdominal muscles. Yeah, and then turning, twist, right. twist. I think in fourth grade, I got a guitar, mm -hmm. and I started learning uh, the Beatles stuff and Ray Charles. Here you are, your parents are together. What is it like growing up at that time? You're an interracial couple. It's in the 50s. You're in Colorado. So what, what was that like? You frowned it up, man, already. <laughs> <laughs> He put together a group, he had Sheldon Reynolds and he had Sandy Emery and different drummer and different stuff. And they were out touring and Maurice looked great. But then we started hearing that the Parkinson's had, was really taking over. Frida, how did you get inspired and interested in even starting in music? So the first time I sang in front of a real audience at, the, at a recital was a song called Stars Are the Windows of Heaven. Okay, pretty mature song for no, someone. No, so Stars young. Are the Windows of Heaven <laughs> is like a adolescent type okay. song. Okay. You, know? <laughs> you know, like, Stars are the windows of heaven Where angels peek through Up in the sky they keep an eye On kids like me and you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is been such not to play it When she comes to town I started, after a while I started having more pain with my, in my knee. I got arthros arthroscopic surgery in 1992. About maybe 10 years ago I started to notice after yoga class that I would, um, I was starting to get the pains again. It was getting more stressful in my knees. Finally, it got to the point where I went to an orthopedic surgeon, a different one, and he x-rayed my knee and he said, you've got severe arthritis in both knees. My first article in the source was about AMG, and it came out in 1995. Wow. 
And then a few months later, uh, Easy E died. Uh, and I covered Eric's death. I knew Eric. And so um, that was a similar moment because I wrote the cover story. And you look back at the 1995 cover story of Eric's death, I wrote. And so I think that sort of like catapulted me. Worked with a lot of record labels. I wrote Dog, Dog Pound's first bio. You know, I covered Snoop's murder trial. Um, and at the source, I just started to be sort of the West Coast dude. Six months now, your whole life can change. You know, I've had hundreds of thousands of dollars in my bank account. Yeah. I've had 20. Right. You know what I mean? It's just it's the reality of, you know, as 50 say, the game is filled with ups and downs. So I just think that mental health is important in our communities. A few years ago, maybe like four years ago, I lost it all. I had a big office, employees, a few contracts fell through. My woman left me. I was literally in the car, like calling a suicide hotline. Like, wow. I was able to go get counseling. Mm-hmm. I've got counseling multiple times. I've talked mm-hmm. to people, figured out my pain. I know you were born in the Philippines and yes. even lived in Sydney for a bit. Yes, Just I did. tell us a lot about making that transition from overseas to the U.S. My mom is a journalist and uh, a songwriter as well. And so she, she was the, um, she worked for my uncle in the Sydney, Australia when he was the ambassador for Sydney. Mm-hmm. And then we went back to the Philippines and that's when I discovered that singing was what I was meant to do. When the night falls, my lonely heart calls. Oh, dance with somebody. Somebody, yeah, I wanna dance with somebody, with somebody who loves me. I've been able to carry on and find the strength to um, to pull through that grief because of um, remembering my mom's strength and her her everlasting love for for my daughter and I and how she was the biggest fan and without her I wouldn't have been able to do everything that I've done. I'd say when I got to the seventh grade, um, we were a part of this amazing spiritual, cultural phenomenon called hip hop, which birthed me becoming an MC called Sweetie G. That trail in music, helped to accumulate, which would be my pathway to communication. But it was the curation of art, expression, fashion, and passion that kept me from crashing. Oh, I love it. And I discovered David Banner. Uh, Managed discovered him, Positive K. Um, and I met a brother named Alonzo Chavis, who had a sports company. Mm-hmm. And the concept was I was gonna take the hustle, the speed, and the sexiness of the entertainment industry and put it with the sports industry. You were there in the homeless shelter, you know, giving things to people and saying, I was where you are. And I didn't want to just bring a government pack of cheese. I didn't want to just bring you some food stamps. I wanted to bring you kicks that I might buy, wow. that my guys wear. See? What a week. Sure. Yes, you know, medicine and music, that's been my life. My brother brought me John Coltrane, African Brass, and Youssef Latif, Live at Peps. And those were my first introductions to the music. It was the jazz, it was in my body. So I decided to go forego math and go for science and go whole hog into music. Music is so healing to the internal essence of humans, of spirits, of our soul. And those tones can literally heal the body. You know, the earth. Almost like music is therapy. We really are sort of in tune, you know, with the earth. And so that's a key element why music resonates so much. And to a certain extent, it seems like your music can sort of really cross Mm -hmm. those different generations. Where do you think the the blessing and the challenge Mm -hmm. lies in that? Well, I think the blessing and the challenge is that the market is so flooded. The appreciation level has broadened, whereas you just used to have some staple artists that stood out. A lot more uh, visible artists are coming on the scene and doing videos, and we're all glued to social media more so than buying you know, records and listening to the voice. You're now seeing people before you actually even hear their music, and you get to know them.
losing weight and um, getting my mind right and, and now being able to really help other people. My mom moved to Los Angeles, California, and she actually started me and my sister singing Hebrew music. But then somebody gave her a record from Walter Hawkins, Love Alive 2, and I heard that music and I was like, wow. I was like, I think that's what I want to sing. I think that's what I want to do. And so that was my introduction to gospel music was Walter Hawkins. And of course, then I went on to um, find out about the Clark Sisters and the wine ends of commission and things like that. And so that's like, that was my beginning in gospel. Give to thee, Jesus. You're the song I sing, oh Jesus. Come and Your upbringing when it came to health, like, right was from jump. You all oh, did yeah. not eat a lot of things <laughs> that were unhealthy. These are people even called you strange. I saw other people eating other things that we weren't allowed to eat, like fried chicken, you know, and, and things like that. And so she taught us young how important diet was. But of course, I'm grateful for it today because um, health is very important.